Well, hello and welcome to the San Jose State Weekly Football Press Conference. Spartans 1-0 and following their win at home against Air Force in the 2020 opener, 17-6. to This week, the Spartans will take on the University of New Mexico Lobos, an FS1 televised game starting at 4 o'clock Pacific time, 5 o'clock Mountain time uh, for the broadcast. You can also catch the broadcast on the radio, on the Spartan Radio Network, uh, beginning at uh, 3.30 Pacific time, 12.20 KDOW, the flagship station, or available on TuneIn as well. As we welcome in San Jose State head coach, Brent Brennan. Go ahead, coach. All right. What's up? It's good to see everybody. Um, obviously, it's a, it's a fun Monday around here. We're uh, feeling great about uh, how we played Saturday night. I think, um, you know, it's it's always interesting when you go into a game like that against a team um, that plays the style of football they they play um, with a little bit more, a little bit different uh, kind of runway and practice process for us uh, leading up to that game. And so I was just really, really excited. Yeah, I, I was just so proud of our team. I thought they played extremely hard. Um, I thought our staff did a great job putting together a plan and, uh, you know, executing it at a high level. Um, you know, I think it was just such a, a unique thing being in the stadium with our cardboard cutouts and our non-travel roster in the stands. <laughs> um, but it was great that it was on TV. It was great, you know, with Fox and, and getting the chance for, uh, you know, lots of people to view our, um, you know, view, watch us play and, and, and see us. Um, play the way we did is I think that was incredibly positive for all of our players and our program. Um, you know, it's a, I think it's really hard for the young men that are playing for us when their families can't come to the game. Um, you know, that's that, that's a hard deal, you know, and, and their parents. And so being on TV like that is great because it gives everybody a chance to at least uh, see it, you know, and, you know, get a really good view of it and, and also feel like they're part of it on some level. So, um, you know, obviously we got a big challenge this week. Um, it's a unique week and, and we're bringing it out day by day, but, uh, you know, the players are off today and, and players are busy or coaches are busy um, putting together a plan. All right, we'll start with some, some questions here. And again, for those of you participating, please introduce yourself and the outlet that you are with. Uh, and there are two ways that you can, you can uh, identify that you do have a question. Raise your hand in the participants part, or you can put it into the chat. I see Justice. Uh, De Los Santos has a question. Go ahead, Justice. Hey, Coach. Justice De Los Santos, Bay Area News Group. Uh, obviously, your week two opponent in New Mexico did not play on Saturday. Uh, what do you know as of right now in regards to the status of Saturday's game? You know, I know right now, uh, you know, University of New Mexico and the Mountain West Conference are working hard. Uh, we really want to play this game. And so I think we're trying to figure out how that's going to go. There's, there's a couple scenarios out there. One of them is possible. One of them is possibility of them coming to us. Um, but, you know, our players are excited to play. Our staff's excited to play and university. Of New Mexico. So hopefully we get that ironed out by the end of the day. And for further information, I know there's a lot of speculation on the topic of where uh, this game will be played. Probably best to direct those at either of the athletics department themselves, either San Jose state or the university of New Mexico. Uh, and I'm sure you know, Lawrence can can take those questions too and, and direct you guys in the right uh, right way. Steve, I see your hand is up. Go ahead. Hey, Coach. It's Steve Virgin from the Albuquerque Journal. Hey, Steve. I, I was just hoping you could speak a little bit about the challenges you had during the pandemic and just leading up to that opener. Um, and I guess, did it make it feel any much better because you guys won and after all you guys gone through? You know, I, I think, um, you know, the, the least sexy thing in the world is complaining about your challenges during the pandemic. You know, like everyone has them, right? It doesn't matter <laughs> um, where you are. It's like, you know, everyone's got something to complain about. You know, uh, I would prefer that we don't jump on the band bandwagon and keep complaining. Um, I think it's been unique. It's been unique for everybody. I think it's an incredibly challenging time for young people. Um, I see that. I feel that. I'm watching them go through it. We're trying to help them work through it. Um, you know, being, I thought our administration did an incredible job getting us a place to practice. Uh, the experience at Humboldt was outstanding. The people there were great. Um, we were up there for, I think, 11 or 12 days. Um, you know, we were like locked down in the dorms. We had study hall at night. It, it was just a totally unique thing. You know, normally you have training camp. You, you, 
there's no school. Um, you kind of got your team locked down together, but this was, a, uh, you know, we had to balance school and, and uh, which was awesome. Guys did a great job with that. And, and our coaches did too. And, uh, you know, I thought our athletic director who's on here, Marie and our president, Dr. Papazian and Charlie Foss um, and did an incredible job getting us a place to practice and giving us a chance to play that game. Otherwise there, the game would have never happened. So um, we, we feel fortunate about that. Um, then, you know, the, the tighter window, we had about three weeks, we just made it different, right? Like you had to rethink how you practice. You had to rethink uh, how much, are, how much are we going to hit? Um, you know, like normally you have two or three big scrimmages before you play your first game. Uh, we only had one. And so I just, you know, I, I wasn't sure we were going to be ready for the physicality that Air Force brings. So that was something I was incredibly excited about, just how our kids just played so hard and just seemed to enjoy it and play for each other. It was just an awesome night here. So, um, like I said, I think everyone's had hardships. I know New Mexico is working through their stuff um, right now, and, and they have been. And, and, but it doesn't matter if you're talking to me or any other head coach in college football right now. Everybody is dealing with some – complication from the pandemic it's it's just it's the reality of the situation we're all in and everyone's doing the best they can but one of the things I keep telling our team is like you know we've never been through this before like we don't we don't have a real specific plan how to handle this thing that is like has us wearing masks every day and taking our temperature 500 times a, a week so it's just a you know trying to help them work through that and and trying to come up with our best plan day to day to help us uh, get ready to play it has been a re it really you know unique time and, and, and a challenging time hoi shen you're next go ahead uh, hi coach um first i want to congratulate you and your team for your latest winning against air force and i have two questions uh the first uh yes i'm with the south Day state university of day news my first question is how does a spartan football team maintain its regular practice and enhance team spirit in the middle of the pandemic. My second question is what precaution the uh, sport department takes to ensure a uh, COVID protocol is applied during the football game. Thank you. Okay. Um, the first question, how, how do we uh, keep our spirit high during the pandemic? I, is that, am I paraphrasing? Is that accurate? Yeah, and how do you establish that uh, team spirit? You know, I, I think um, the football teams are really unique, special groups to be a part of. And I think one of the things that I, I know our football team was, was missing over the last, you know, seven months before we got to start training and being together was just all of us being together at the same time. Um, you know, it, it really is like a big um, functional slash dysfunctional family, right? It's 100, you know, when you throw the coaching staff and the trainers and the weight room staff, you got probably 150 people in that, in that group. So um, there's just, a, there's a lot going on for everybody. And so not being together and not like feeling that energy and that support of each other during a tough time was, was really, really challenging. I thought going to Humboldt was really good for that. Um, I think us just in general being back together, being able to practice is really good for that. Um, the players feed off each other. I think our coaches are good mentors and, and good people for them to be around. And so they help them, uh, you know, kind of stay positive and stay focused on school and football. Um, you know, really, there's just been a, such a huge emphasis on us um, talking about like focusing, like working on what we can control. Um, and so that's been kind of our, our mantra so to speak. And, and that's been, I think, helpful. Um, you know, your second question, um, all, all of the precautions and the processes that, that we adhere to on a daily basis um, and, and then on game day are all directly from the county. So that part of it, um, those conversations are go back and forth between FDNO here, um, our athletic department, our training staff, all of our medical staff, and then the county, Santa Clara. And, um, you know, so far, you know, we feel great about our process and, and our protocols here. I think our team has done an incredible job, an absolutely awesome job at mask wearing and social distancing and making good choices when they're away from football. And um, so I, I'm, I'm really, really proud of our team. I think they feel great about that. 
it's, it's obviously requires a ton of discipline for, you know, an 18 to 23 year old young person to make those great choices 100% of the time. And so um, I'm just really excited about that. Um, but that's the, you know, what we do day in and day out and what we do on game day is all very clear and it's very specific. Actually, um, you know, we're, you know, our athletic director, Marie too, it was out there checking temperatures and logging, uh, you know, about a half hour ago. So um, everybody is um, doing their part. All right, next up, uh, Andrew Pang, go ahead. Hello, uh, Coach Brandon. First, uh, congratulations on the win last Saturday. So I wanted to go back to um, some what you've been uh, talking about as far as team goals for the past few years. You have consistently emphasized that the top team goals are to run the ball better, to stop the run, and to win the turnover battle. While the Spartans were plus one on the turnover margin and held a triple option offense to just one touchdown, what did you think of the running game's performance against Air Force? Thank you. We were only plus one. Where's Lawrence at? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, two takeaways and uh, one pass interception. Okay. Um, I, I thought we didn't run the ball well enough, Andrew. Right? 2.3 a carry. It's not good enough. I think we all know that. Um, it's been a huge point of emphasis for us. Um, and so... Obviously, that's something we're working hard to fix. And, uh, you know, everybody around knows that that's a place we have to improve drastically. Um, I also think that um, we have an offensive line that's um, – we have a new O-line coach who is outstanding. Um, you guys – hopefully you guys get to meet him face-to-face -face at some point because he's um, – you'll know who he is when you see him because he's, he's the biggest guy on campus. Um, but um, – He's doing a great job, and we have, you know, we have some new players mixed in there. And so it takes some time for that offensive line to figure some of those things out, the calls, getting the checks, and then not having a full spring practice, not having a full fall camp. Um, I, I, you know, I expect those numbers to be better as we go forward. All right, next up, uh, Victor Aquino. Go ahead. Hey, Coach. Um, Victor, your hair, okay. man. It's it's. You're looking good, buddy. Like every time, it's, yeah, it's big time. You're like going back a couple decades. Yeah, definitely. That's that's the intent. <laughs> so uh, you got New Mexico with uh, their rookie coach uh, Gonzalez, and you got Rocky Long there on D on the defensive side. What can you speak to any, any expectations on their? You know, I'm sure they're going to run spread. I'm sure Rocky Long's going to have his three three five going, and kind of what what do you kind of expect to see uh, from that? that pretty much new team? Well, I, I think like going into it, like first and foremost, immediately you know that um, New Mexico has the best defense coordinator in the Mountain West, right? There's not been a better defensive coach in the West half of the United States in the last 25, 30 years in Rocky Long. I would say I, that, that's my opinion. Like he's brilliant and he's fantastic. Um, and I think everybody saw what he did at San Diego State over the last decade or, the pre, you know, until this year. Um, you know, but the other pieces we don't really know much about, right? They didn't play and they didn't have spring practice or much of it. So it's, there's, there's so much unknown there. Um, you know, Danny Gonzalez seems like a great guy. I really enjoyed getting to know him, um, you know, kind of like this on, we've had, you guys can't imagine how many head coaches Zooms we've had over the last seven months, but it's been enough to fill a lifetime. Um, like head coaches like each other. We don't like each other that much. You know, I mean, it's been, <laughs> it's, <laughs> I'm kidding. I really like all the head coaches in this conference, but there's been so much. And so, and Dan's had really good insight, good ideas. Um, I've really, really valued his input in those conversations as when everyone's trying to figure out, I mean, all the way back to March, how we're going to navigate, um, you know, the, you know, the upcoming season and just everything. So um, it's going to be really interesting to see what they are. It's really – it's a unique place, I think, to be in as a coach where you don't have any game film to go off of week two. Um, you don't have, um, you know, an, any idea of exactly what they're going to be, um, you know, certainly offensively. Um, and so, you know, that's that part of it is all a, a kind of a unique challenge for us. But I think, you know, it's, it's you know, get in line, man. we got plenty of challenges every week. You know, last week was a different kind of challenge. This week's a new one. It's kind of how college football is and, and especially how it is under the current 
climate. So we just got to get ready to go and get ready to play. And I know this, we'll be excited to play. However it comes out, we'll be excited to play. We were on Saturday. I expect us to be again this Saturday. Okay, Steve, I, I see your hand uh, still up. Do you have another question for Coach? All right. So how about Stephanie Lamb? Hi, Coach. My name is Stephanie. I'm from the Spartan Daily. I have kind of a different question. I heard you and some players on the team have been volunteering for the African American Community Servants Agency. And I wanted to know um, what your experience was volunteering so far and what you feel about and how you feel about players helping out the community during this time. I think it's, I think it's extremely important that our young men learn the value of giving of themselves. I think that's critical. And um, one of our players was working an internship with that, with a, the African American Community Center um, in downtown San Jose, uh, Christian Webb. He, if you have not met him, y'all need to talk to him. He is an incredible young man. Like he is special in every way. It's a great thought process about him. He's just mature beyond his years. Um, and so my wife and I went and volunteered um, during COVID. Um, you know, now that the season's here, that's slowed down a little bit for, for me. Um, but um, I definitely, we had a great experience there. Um, obviously, they, they serve uh, a unique part of the community, and uh, we're just happy to be a part of it. And we're going to continue to do that um, through our Beyond Football program. You know, we have done thousands of community service hours in the last three and a half years, literally thousands, which I feel great about. And our players are learning the value of giving back to their community. They're learning the value of helping lift someone up who maybe is down on their luck or having a tough time. And, you know, that's something that has to be just a cornerstone of what we do here as, uh, as educators and as, you know, people helping young men uh, grow to be men and, and quality contributing members of society. So um, our time there has been great and we're going to continue to do a lot of work there. I know our rise to vote. Um, was that what it was last weekend? We've had, we've had two things. Uh, Last week was race for the challenge. That's what it was. Yes. That was, um, you know, we raised money for um, the African American Community Center. That's where those, that's where those fundraise dollars went. So um, it's, it's a pretty exciting thing that I think our players are starting to feel the value in that and wanting to do more and more of it. So we're excited about where that's at, Stephanie. All right, Jackson Moore, go ahead. Yes, uh, Jackson Moore with 24-7 Sports. Uh, Coach, um, you obviously have the challenge of not having seen any film of New Mexico. They also have the challenge of not having four quarters to work things out. Uh, is both challenges, is any one more advantageous from a coach's uh, perspective? I think it depends on what coach you talk to. You know, I think everybody could talk about how, how those things challenge you one way or another. Um, you know, so that's going to be a lot of interesting to watch uh, how that unwinds on Saturday. You know, I, I think – that part of it has been, um, you know, us getting to play. We also played a team that you have to wrap your head around just a much different way to play football in that game. Um, you know, that's not, it's not what you get every week in this conference really, right? You only get it once, um, you know, a year. So, uh, you know, I think we still have a lot to work out too. All right. Uh, back to Victor Aquino. Go ahead. Coach, how did you, um, or how would you gauge the strength and conditioning, you know, for the time off and the usual start and, and uh, say the, the depth chart expectations that kind of play out the way you and the coaches kind of predicted and just, you know, general idea or comment on that? No, I, I think our strength and conditioning staff does a great job. You know, Coach Uribe and his crew in there, they're awesome. Really appreciate them. It's definitely – COVID presented some unique challenges that way in terms of like what was available, when, hours, repopulation of campus, change the hours in there, right? Other student athletes need so. But I felt like our guys looked good. Um, I thought they played really hard. I thought we looked physical. Um, you know, I thought we ran well. So, you know, it, it, that way I think we looked how I expected us to look. I was encouraged by that. Um, our conditioning level, right? Played a four quarter game and, and were able to finish it. Um, you know, so that part of it, the, the depth 
part, I think that thing keeps playing out. I, I you know, I think um, everybody wants that depth chart to be set in stone, but you know, you're just one turned ankle away from it getting turned upside down. So, uh, but we're, we're excited about the start of it and how it looked and, and really we're excited to play again. So we can see, keep figuring out what we need to improve on or, or, you know, where we can go next. So it was good. All right, we're going to the voice of the New Mexico Lobos. Robert Portnoy, go ahead. Coach Brennan, hi. Um, How you doing? Two quick questions, please. Uh, the first uh, is sort of a follow-up on a previous question about Coach Gonzalez. Um, he related a conversation that you had with him after the Lobos game last week was canceled, and he said you were the first one to call him uh, to, you know, just – say, I'm sorry this happened and, and have a conversation with him. I'd like to hear your perspective on that conversation. And then I have one more quick one after that answer, please. I, I think, um, you know, I, I, I alluded to it earlier, but, but this is just a hard time for everybody. You know, I talk primarily about it being a hard time for young people, but it's a hard time for grownups too, right? And so you have Danny, finally gets to be a head coach. He's been working his butt off his whole life for this job. And then he's all geared up and his team is ready to play. And then because of the pandemic, they don't get to play. And so I just called him and said, I'm not going to tell you exactly what I said, because I don't think it's meant for, for radio or TV or the, or print, but um, you know, I, I just, I felt bad for him and I felt bad for his coaching staff. And obviously New Mexico is a place that's special to him. I felt like it was kind of like me coming back to San Jose, like how excited I was for that first game. And, um, and so I just reached out to him to just, you know, tell him I was thinking about him and I was sorry that happened to him. And, and uh, you know, just trying to, um, you know, there's been so many head coaches that have been so good to me since I got, um, since I got hired here that, um, you know, I just thought that was the right thing to do. The second one, um, is about your quarterback and Lobo fans remember him from 2017. He threw for over 400 yards and three touchdowns when New Mexico went to Kyle Field. Um, and then obviously you saw him last year with Arkansas. You've seen a, a ton of tape on him over his career. And it, I guess it's a two part question. From your perspective, how did you get him to San Jose State? We've, we've heard the story about his friendship with um, your previous quarterback from the, the, the camps, right? But that's part one. How did you get him to San Jose State? And then how is he different as your quarterback compared to what, you know, you might have seen on tape from when he was a younger player? Well, I mean, if he's going to throw for 400 this weekend, I'll take that, you know, just, just if, if we're um, – but, uh, you know, what? I think – uh, him coming here was absolutely his personal relationship with our, our quarterback from last year, Josh Love. And um, I think for, for Nick Starkle, when you're parts of programs and there keeps being turnover at the head coaching position, it's just an unsettling deal for, especially at that position. Um, and so, you know, I think he went through, I think at two stops, I think he went through three head coaches and, and that, that's just a, that's a mess uh, for a player. Um, you know, like you need that stability. I mean, that's been such a huge focal point for us as a program here, trying to maintain some stability with our coaching staff, with our leadership at the, at the university, with our leadership in the athletic department. Um, and so, you know, so I totally understand kind of where it's come from that way. Um, when, when we first talked, it was really, you know, I'm pretty sure he hasn't talked to a lot of head coaches that talk like I do. Um, I'm just kind of down to earth and straight up all the time. And I was like, hey, this is what we want to do. Come on out here, fight for the job. And if you're good enough, you'll be the guy. And it's really that simple. Um, and he's been great. Like, he's done a great job with the team. The team really respects him. He understands the importance of the quarterback position and the leadership. He has a great relationship with all the quarterbacks in that room because that's always a little bit complicated. He's done a great job there. Um, and so, you know, that part of it is fun. I thought Saturday he did some really good stuff. I know he'd like to have the, the one pick back. Um, but, um, again, it's a learning process, too. You didn't – I think one of the hard things for, for Nick and for, for our offensive football team is that you didn't have the normal 
like normally those guys go throw routes on air. I mean, thousands of times by the time you get to a season from the end of spring practice to the start of fall camp, there are thousands of reps when no one's looking just out on the field by themselves running around. Um, it's really when you find your timing and you build a lot of your chemistry with the quarterbacks and the receivers and the, you know, the guys that catch passes. And so they, you know, they didn't have that. So I think he's going to work into that, but we were excited about, you know, what we saw in game one, he was accurate and, and, and completed a high percentage of his throws. Okay, Jacob Lee, you're up next. Hi, Coach. Jacob Lee with the Spear. Um, I just wanted to touch on, even though San Jose this last weekend was um, plus one in the turnover um, margin, there were a couple errors. Um, it looked like a, a fumble on a kickoff return and a um, bobbled snap. Um, how important is it to you guys to um, clean up these um, small um, errors that could be the deciding factor for these closer games? Yeah, I mean, ball security is absolute most important thing we do offensively. Um, you know, I think that part of it is critical. Um, the, you know, the fumble on the kickoff, I mean, between you and me, Jacob, it's not a fumble unless it's actually a fumble. But they, uh, you know, they, he was down. But that was also Shamar's first time touching a football since he played against St. John Bosco in the state championship last year. <laughs> you know, it's his first live rep, and he takes the opening kickoff. Um, so I thought he handled it pretty well. Um, and then he had the really nice kickoff later in the game that got negated by a penalty. But, um, you know, he uh, – you know, that ball security, we spend an insane amount of time on protecting the football and taking care of it. Um, you know, the snap, you know, I'm, gl I'm glad. I thought, um, you know, what Nick did was exactly right. That's exactly what we coach every day. When we have a ball security, every, ball security circuit every day of practice, right? One of the things like that is a muff snap, fall on it. And that's exactly what Nick did. So I saw a drill in practice, for the worst case scenario, the coaching that took place and then the execution on game day. So I was pleased with that. All right, Justice De Los Santos, another question. Hey coach, this might fall into what Justin was kind of describing after my initial question, but what's the plan right now in regards to your travel schedule and your overall preparation with the situation on Saturday being kind of fluid, as you mentioned, as you mentioned with that, possibility that the game gets brought over to San Jose. What's kind of the plan in regards to everything? Which, so which part, sorry, is, are you talking about like logistically how we would handle that? Or are you talking about the football part? Uh, kind of the logistics, just because like you do would have to, like if the game is scheduled for Albuquerque, but like, and you would have to leave at a certain point, but what's kind of the, what's kind of the plan in regards to navigating everything and ensuring that your guys are as prepared as possible with the situation? being so up in the air that's that's a good question um i would say uh, the logistics part the good thing our athletics director and our football operations ben thenis are both on this call so i would uh turn any logistics conversations over to them um but in terms of the football like we just have to get ready it doesn't matter like we have a game on saturday you know what i mean it doesn't matter if we play it here or if we play it in egypt like we gotta go like we have to get ready to play and that part of it won't change our our process, whether we're playing on the road or playing at home. If we're playing at home, we'll practice a little later on Friday than we normally would. If we're playing on the road, we'll practice early Friday morning. So either way, um, you know, the way we travel here, the way we're lucky enough to travel, um, we always practice on Friday before we go. Um, we're able to get that in, which is awesome because we're able to use our facilities and our space and we're actually able to have real practice um, I know lots of times teams go on the road and they walk through in the opponent's stadium or but it's just hard to have real practice um, in someone else's stadium. So um, we're, we're fortunate to do it that way here. Okay, Jackson Moore, another question. Coach, uh, you've talked a lot about the uh, discipline and the buy-in for your team to, to get through this very unusual preseason. Uh, I believe five of the six next teams you have have uh, new head coaches. Um, can you kind of put yourselves in their shoes if, this was going on in 2017 with uh, the way the team was then, how uh, it might have gone for you? 
Danny's calling me right now. Should I take it? Hey, Danny, you're on my press conference with everybody. Do you want to jump in this thing or do you want to? Uh, he says hello. Hey, I'll, I'll call you when I'm done. Will you? Is that all right? Oh, no problem, buddy. See it. He sends his best. Um, okay, what was the question? Sorry. Yeah, uh, just so discipline, going through that. Five, five of the six new head coaches, if that was me and 17. Uh -huh. um, well, first of all, let's get something straight. Brady Hoke is not a new head coach. Like, Brady Hoke has coached a lot of football as a head coach, and he's a darn good one. Um, you know, I really, you know, uh, really enjoy Danny. I'm getting to know him. And, um, you know, uh, Marcus Arroyo, I was in his wedding. Like, we're like brothers, and so we talk every other day. Um, who else we got after that? I know there's a lot of – Oh, yeah. Oh, Kaylin, you know, down in Fresno. We've talked a lot during this time. Uh, LV, you and LV. Oh, yeah, I know. I mentioned Arroyo. Oh, oh okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so then, yeah, and obviously Coach Graham, um, you know, we've crossed over a little bit when I was an assistant and he was at Arizona State. Um, you know, so he's not a new head coach either, right? He's coached a lot of football and been very good at it. Um, so I think, you know, it's the guys that are the first timers where you, it, everything's brand new. And, and I think the, the hardest thing is you go from being a assistant to being a head coach. So you manage like coach Arroyo, right? He's a quarterback coach at Oregon. He's the offense coordinator. He's responsible for five or six guys in that room. And, and then he's orchestrating half the team, but you don't have the whole team. And, and so all of a sudden it's just, there's so much more to, to figure out um, that part of it. And, um, and then I think there's also some challenge in transition. I just think, um, you know, I know when I came in here, um, that's always part of the process. And you're bringing in a whole new culture, a whole new discipline, a whole new process of doing things. And you're going to have players that are going to jump in and go all in. You're going to have players that are on the fence. And then you're going to have players that are like, I don't want to do this new thing, right? So there's a, there's a natural progression there and, 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 and working through that as you go. Okay, just a couple more questions here. Uh, next from Andrew Peng. Yes, uh, in case I didn't mention it earlier, I'm with 24-7 Sports like Jackson is. And so my question for my next question for Coach Brennan is, um, back in December when you got your contract extension, you said, quote, it is an incredible time to be a part of San Jose State University, end of quote. Of course, uh, we know that uh, we've got a new parking garage being built down on South Campus and the the Seth Q Stadium is being renovated, and right now, starting off the season with a win, has our fans really excited from what I've been seeing around the people who read my website. So with that being said, what would you say to fans who feel disappointed that they won't be able to cheer on the Spartans in person this year? Stick with us. You know, I mean, I think a lot of the people that you're hearing from right now are, are people that have stuck with us through this process of some really tough times, you know, the last three years. And, and I'm, I'm grateful for that. Um, when I, when I spoke of this being an exciting time at San Jose state, most of the time when I talk about that, I'm just talking about just a general alignment of the university. I think with our president and, you know, her cabinet, our athletics director campus, it just seems to be a great healthy vibe about San Jose state university. And you see it, manifesting itself in lots of different ways you know um two weeks ago what we have you know like forbes magazine i think named it the most transformative university in the entire country like like that's big that's crazy right like san jose state is finally getting the recognition as an institution that it deserves and i think that's just you know the then you walk on campus and you look at the new student union or you look at um you know the new science building that's being built or you, you look at the student rec center like it it's just a crazy time or come to south campus there's people that haven't been on south campus in a few years and they can't believe it when they get here beach volleyball courts for our beach team you know soccer looks great we have new tennis we have new softball golf facility like it's just a unique time man. it's never been a time like this andrew never been a time like this at san jose state and so um, you know, I think is, is kind of the, the people come together and keep doing the right stuff here. 
this can be an incredible journey for all of us. All right, uh, final question for Coach Victor Aquino. Go ahead. Coach, oh. <laughs> yeah, actually, it's for um, – now I see Marie and Ben there, actually. Um, nice. Get them, yes. Yeah, yeah, I'm tired of talking to Coach Brandon there. Um, there's obviously a vested interest for negative testing across all the teams, right, Marie? Um, are those – communications, frequency, or intensity, like before the season started still happening. Can you speak to that and how you're assuring each other? What are you guys talking about besides negative testing reports? And how are you checking in with each other? I mean, what's that whole, what's that like, I guess? I'm just curious. Yeah. About that. Well, first of all, I want to mention the hair on Victor too, because uh, I noticed it on Saturday and I think it looks quite, I think you look like George Clooney. I, just, I thought it was George Clooney walking by me. Um, my wife. <laughs> okay. So, uh, the testing. Well, I'm not quite sure what your question is, but I do know that, um, and Lawrence, correct me, am I wrong? As of Saturday, it wasn't at 1,800 tests for football, and there were two asymptomatic positives, which were the two young men who actually, when they returned from their home to come here uh, to participate uh, in football, they tested um, positive. But We've done so much testing, and as I think everyone knows, the testing protocols are very clear. They're mandated from Santa Clara County health officials. Um, and we're testing a lot of student athletes these days, these days, not just football, but our basketball programs, our track and field program, and you know, everyone, there's a quite there's 10% just random throughout the whole department getting tested on Friday. So uh, we're just really, really pleased with the results. Um, we do have a process in place if someone does test positive. The thing that uh, has occurred that's a little bit interesting for football is a couple weeks ago, we fell into the protocol set by the Mountain West Conference. So all 12 football programs are going through the same testing protocols so that we know when we played Air Force or when we play New Mexico, uh, that they will be tested through the same process and the same um, consistency as we're being tested. So um, I'm not sure if I answer your question because I think it's part like how do we communicate the negatives or yeah and if you mean the negative tests we haven't had many if you mean the the negative sense of having to test so much um, we're just thrilled to be practicing and playing and whatever our county says that we have to do in order to practice in order to compete that's what we're going to do. You know the. Uh... <clears throat> As of last Friday, there were 1,820 tests connected with uh, San Jose State football, according to our athletic training staff. And Marie had mentioned the number of uh, two asymptomatic positives very early on in the process. And as she said that uh, we are now going through the Mountain West uh, testing protocol three times a week. Okay, Justin. All right, well, that uh, will do it for this week's press conference. Again, every week we're going to do it on Zoom, the same way, same format. So look for the emails uh, from the sports information staff and from Lawrence. And also check the website, sjsuspartans.com, for any up-to-date news that may happen this week regarding uh, the next game against New Mexico. But thanks so much for, uh, for participating. We'll talk to you next week. Thanks, everybody. Bye.